Hello, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Talking About Rock, sponsored by School of Rock, Rochester, New York. I spoke with today's guest last year about his project, Black Swan, with Reb Beach, Jeff Pilsen, and Matt Starr for the Generation Mind release. He is back today to talk with us about his new solo album, Alive, due to be released on February 17th on Frontier Records. Coming up, my interview with the amazing Robin McCauley next on Talking About Rock. All right, let's welcome back one of Rock's defining vocalists to the show, Robin McCauley. Robin, how are you? I am very good, Robert. Thanks for having me. Thank you uh, for being with you. us. I appreciate it. Oh, happy belated birthday to you as oh, well. God. Well, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, just give you a quick shout out. So when I, would, I would follow you on social media, obviously, and, and you just got back from, uh, I think you took a trip or a vacation. Yeah, it was actually a working vacation. We were down in Mexico. Uh, we did a corporate show um, uh, about two weeks ago. We were down in Mexico and uh, right before uh, Christmas, uh, I was down in Bolivia for two shows. Um, so um, before that, I was in Bulgaria. So we're, we're moving around the globe. You are a busy guy. You're, I know you're always keeping busy with projects. So you're here to tell us about your new solo album, Live, which is due to be released February 17th on Frontier Records. It sounds right. amazing. Thank you so much. Have you listened to the whole thing or you just got uh, the singles or? I was, I just listened to a couple, a couple of the tracks, which, which I love. And you know, your voice continues to amaze me with, with the new tracks you release. It's, I'm Thank telling you, you it yeah, just sounds have, great. We, we dropped the, uh, the title track alive, um, maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago on, uh, it's on YouTube. And then we just dropped the second one two weeks ago. Um, feel like hell, which is also up there and, all of the links and everything, the frontiers, if you want to pre-order and all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, people should definitely should check it out. And you have this process that I've heard you talk about in other interviews of kind of mentally centering yourself when you get ready to sing, right? You're kind of like yeah. get in a space or get in. You, uh, you know, you're ready for the job at hand. And uh, I usually map it out. And uh, um, I like to just leave the end of the songs pretty open in case, you know, I get that magical inspiration man um <laughs> but, but you know when i'm demoing um um i spend a lot of time just listening to the music with a blank sheet of paper before i do anything so that you know you're in the song and um that's how i approach it when alive was one of the first uh one of the first songs that i actually completed demoed um and i went this would be a great title track and i kind of I kind of moved around everything else centered centered on that. Somebody asked me uh, a week or two ago, dude, is this a concept album? And I went, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't think they have too many of those anymore because people aren't exactly. like really staring and, and have that that attention span like they used to, unfortunately. Yeah, I I uh I like to I like to sit with every piece of music and on the day, that's what you get for that song. And and I move on and I move on to the next one and I'm in that moment. And sometimes I read a lot. Sometimes I use what, you know, if a story hits me, I'll read up on it and I'll incorporate it into a lyric and that sort of stuff. And I like doing that. You know, Jeff Pilson will tell me when I'm doing the Black Swan stuff, he goes, dude, there's always a story. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. right. We talked to you about the, uh, the last project. Yeah, that yeah, was great. All of this story. And I went, yeah, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and on this album, you have uh, guitarist uh, Andre Cerveso. Yes. He's with you I on did. here. Yeah. And as you have, I did uh, on the, as I did on Standing on the Edge, he's, sorry to cut across you. He's awesome. Yeah. He's just awesome. Yeah. He definitely sounds great. And you have bassist, keyboardist, uh, I'll try to pronounce this correctly here. Alessandro Del Vecchio. <laughs> Alessandro Del Vecchio. Yeah. Yes. Good right? job. Yeah. And he's also <laughs> producing it again. Producers and engineers on this one also, in the midst of ten thousand other bands that he works on, because uh, he's the label guy. Um, but jumping in here, um, and I want to say this on every interview I do, he manages to make my record sound different 
than the rest of the Frontiers record tonight. And I'm going to stick to that because I think he does. And, um, you know, look at my artwork. And right. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Because I know we talked about that a little bit last time. Right. Yeah. Did you have a hand in that artwork? Because you're yeah, pretty... you know, you know, when I wrote when I wrote the lyrics to Alive, I had already been conjuring up the uh, the artwork in my head. And I'm going, oh, my God, I'm going to have so much fun with this. Cause, yeah, because you were teasing us on our last show. You're getting ready you know, to do this. Talking to you before, you know, I love the old vampire movies. I love the old Frankenstein movies. So I headed down. I headed down the Frankenstein rabbit hole on this one. And, you know, I created had the artist create this uh old laboratory type thing with the incubator and bringing the the electrodes and the electrical right, charge right and then when we went to do the photos you know if you knew me you'd know i just i'm not one of those guys i hate standing up against a wall or a backdrop or a green screen and you know right doing doing just the poses just, yeah i just hate that shit i just hate it i've never liked it um and most of the time that's what they want i have a great photographer from the label Enzo uh, Mazio, and he goes, what do you have in store for us this time? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so I got this idea with this powerful electric charge, and I was trying to come up with ideas of how we could do it as we were doing the photos, which is right. nigh on Right, and the photos, as you can see, they're, they're amazing, right? Yeah, nigh on impossible. So we, he goes, okay, so I have this great post-production person and so we created a sequence you know opening up the charge into the and and he they did an amazing job they yeah did, it really yeah, pops for sure great. on there it's great colors are great and you know it's fun robert that's that's the key we're having a little bit of fun with it we're not taking everything like oh, right and it makes it stand out because if you're not familiar with your tracks you you look at this album and it's a great album cover very cool you know Thank what you. i mean and it fits and when you hear the alive track it's just like it is right it yeah it fits that exactly too when i heard it i was like okay this is what i was waiting for when you're talking about last time <laughs> i gotcha yeah very cool stuff and we don't want to forget to mention your drummer um nicholas yes. papaccio is on yes. this here too right yeah. incredible just a powerhouse and you know when we did standing on the edge um Al uh, alessandra and myself we met uh during a, a shanker show in sweden we were doing a festival and uh, we actually got to hook up and spend some time because I was late with this record. I should have submitted this last June and I was nowhere near ready being out on the road with Schenker and, and uh, right. You were just getting ready to do that. You were, when we were talking. Last yeah. And, and then, then that got extended. I did more than I was supposed to do. And then we did some festivals. So I said to Alessandro, I said, dude, I am late to the party. And he goes, well, I'm here. So I'm late as well. <laughs> right. So it wasn't just all on you. So. Yeah. So, you know, we discussed more in person about giving this a harder edge and, and a different approach to the writing. Um, and off we went to the races and, uh, you know, they sent me a bucket of songs and I picked the 12 that I wanted to work on. And as you said, discussing it, uh, you know, how I am, how I go, I go very prepared into the studio when it's time for vocals. And I pretty much map everything out from the demo side onwards and then i leave the i leave the ends completely open to what i'm going to do on it and uh nothing got changed i was kind of pissed off i want he's going to change something he's going to suggest something why didn't you do this instead of that and he didn't change anything and i suppose he liked it and I'm i guess he did right <laughs> i guess he did you're more prepared than you, you had thought right you know and i sent him an email and i go no changes dude what's up are you even no notes no, no. Are you even that. listening to this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and kudos to him also because he is so busy, Robert. Right. And um, that little bastard found time <laughs> to bring a baby into the world at the top end of the year. So, mucho congratulations. Oh, congratulations to him and for his that. wife. So you know. The guy is so busy yet, you know, we know what you're doing. We know right. <laughs> well, it seems like busy people can definitely get stuff done, right? We figure out how to coordinate our schedules and we make it work somehow. It might take a little time, but we'll figure it out, right? You know, it's called time management. <laughs> yep. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I really love the title track and I wanted to play that for the folks here real quick. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be awesome. right back here with Robin McCauley on Talking About Raw.
Okay, we're back here on talking about rock. Just checked out the video for live. We're talking about it a little bit. So so amazing. Like I was saying, I love how it it slowly builds. Right, you're you're like kind of opening the door a little bit, and then it erupts. You yeah, know what I mean? you know, I wanted to bring as much light into that chorus because because you know it's the song really is about resilience. You know, we've gone through three years of kind of hell. You know, we came in post pandemic, we're all chomping at the bit to get going. Right. And and what do we discover? We discovered that now people, while happy to be sort of out of that lockdown phase, now we're in this sort of disrespectful, I hate you phase. It's like nobody gives a shit phase. Something happened in the midst of all that, the anger. Um, and I started incorporating that kind of a lyric, you know, into it. And and the chorus was basically to say, you know, you can throw the kitchen sink at me because we are very resilient and we have to go forward. We have to get through it. And and there's some horrendous stuff going on right now with all of these mass shootings and stuff. Yeah. And 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 not to brush it aside, but we will we will get through this fog and we'll be better and we'll learn something, hopefully. Right. Um, and that's kind of where I was going with the song, and I wanted to bring that light and charge and 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 sort of hope is that a yep. cheesy thing to say not it, not of, at all i i, I totally agree because i i always consider great music is inspiring right it should make you feel hopeful it it should yeah, it should and build you up I, and you know it's the darker the dismal and then suddenly pow right there it is there is you know it's the old the old adage of light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing right <laughs> right but definitely it, it builds you up it gives you that that hopefulness spirit, you know, and your voice has been quoted as defining time and sounding as inspired and as powerful as ever. Well, I want to tell you, stuff. I did not, I did not write that. <laughs> right? But that's, that's what other, other folks have written, what I've seen, you know. Well, you know, I, I'm having a great time still doing what I do. I'm not tired of doing what I do. Um, and I always tell people, you know, uh, I, I guess it's the Irish in me. I'm fiercely stubborn and proud and 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 I think, you know, at my age, I want to maintain as near as damn it, you know, that element of, of dignity. I don't want people to be whispering, you know, in the corners or under their hand that that guy should really give up. Right, you know? right. Because you see a lot of the art, some of the artists that have been around for a while, they're struggling with it and they're having they're having their issues, right? And we we've seen that and Folks have been calling that out for different shows yeah. and different things, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know, when I hear those whispers, and I will hear them because my hearing is very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll be time to take a step back and go, okay, you know, I don't, I don't want to be making, and I. I'm going to say this loosely. I don't want to be making a fool of myself. And, and right, you don't want to stay at the party too long, like they like know, they say, right? Thank you. That's that's exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, the voice still sounds great. I love it. And you were teasing us last time about maybe re-recording some tracks with uh, Grand Prix. Any anything? Any news on that front? Maybe you could well a little bit listen, if they are listening. Um, I did write and demo. Uh, everything that they sent me and they all liked it and then Phil got bogged down on the road with uh, Uriah Heep and they're right. celebrating their I think 50th anniversary also um, they got really busy and so it kind of and then they took a bunch of unreleased uh, tracks that we had recorded then um, I wasn't a hundred percent happy that they wanted to put them out they remixed it they said it was great remastered it Right. And I still haven't had a copy. Um, so um, my my take was I want to write new material. I don't want to go back into right. the I want to go back into the grave. I want to, you know, we're alive now. Let's move forward. Let's, Let's move forward. Right. right. Some, sometimes they like to test that and they'll take some of the older material, re-release uh, and see how it how it fits. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, know, it's more I, exciting for new stuff. Definitely. I think we know who we are. Right, and, and I think this, if we did release something, we are the Grand Prix now, 2023, not the Grand Prix of 1983. And I think that's super important. It's like, why go back and go, remember we used to do that? Like, yeah, I remember, but you haven't learned anything. You haven't moved forward because everybody's in different bands and projects and you don't 
dive in and steal old stuff there. You write all brand new materials. Right, right. A lot of folks have two or three projects they're working on nowadays. Very yeah. common thing. Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. Yeah. Do something. Be creative. Be creative. And that's what I like. So we did come up with a few things. Um, they, they thought it was great. And uh, yeah, now we need to take it to the next level. It's a slow process, you know. And my name is on a bunch of records. It also comes out on Escape Music. Um, um, I was on Circle of Friends. There's a ton of people. Some people that's actually on the Frontiers label. Um, just guesting. Uh, um, great record circle of friends um so and then there's a um gabrielle deval um she has a record out i'm, I'm on the title track of the album on that i share yeah i think i saw it yeah yep. yeah i share a vocal with her and i'm also heavily involved with um my wonderful and dear italian composer max di carlo and we are writing something completely different i mean there's like movie soundtrack stuff that's what we're doing. And he writes a lot for, there's a lot of sound bites for Netflix and HBO and that sort of stuff. And it's a super exciting project. I can, I get a chance to do something very different. And uh, Max gets excited and he goes, we have to write an opera. <laughs> <laughs> very theatrical, right? Yeah. Yes, yes we do. Right. And it's, 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 it's bombastic. It's epic. It's hugely symphonic. Um, and he just wanted to go down himself. He wanted to do something different. He wanted a, a, a sort of a, a voice on there. Um, he was very happy with my voice on this stuff and what we've done and how we've written over his music. And um, super, super fun in the studio because, you know, he's he wears a different set of, he's a different. He's, he's a got different a different hat. hat. He's a different kettle fish. Yeah. So now you're working with a composer and he hears everything, you know? Right. And, and it's, oh my God, you learn so much. You learn so much in that in that area of music. And the way it's structuring oh things and God, taking things God. apart and reworking oh it, right? Yeah. Oh my God, it's great. It's just great. And and I'm thinking, wow, just when you thought, just when you thought you, you were ready to throw it in, Mm -hmm. Max arrives on the scene and he goes, I have this piece of music for you. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wonderful, you know. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So, so I'm hoping this year uh, we will get to uh, bring that forward. Um, regarding the album Alive, um, I actually will get to perform live uh, in Italy with the whole band and hopefully other shows because we'll be rehearsed because uh, Frontiers have brought back the uh, Frontier Festivals. Um, Excellent. So we'll be doing that live, and I can't wait. We're hoping that Red Beach will be in town. If not with Winger, maybe with something else. And uh, we may well be able to incorporate some Black Swan into that as well. So I'm, I'm hugely excited about it. That would be outstanding. You're such a busy guy. you got so much stuff going on. I wanted to ask you quick about... Uh... Rating the Rock Vault, you you did a lot with that back in the day. Any plans about going back and doing any of that? You're probably too busy. Yeah, so um, I was one of the uh, original cast. I was in there for seven years, right up to the pandemic, and almost 1,500 shows performed. Um, and during the pandemic, um, and then into, uh, I wrote uh, Standing on the Edge, and then a lot of the Schenker stuff came up as we were coming out of the pandemic. Right. And I really got a taste for the festivals again and the live shows. And yeah, that's I, what it's all about. Yep. While I loved Vegas, I went, ah, this is where I came from. This right. is what I, this is what I do. And I, I went, I really miss this. Yeah. And, it's a different um, feel from a Vegas inside show and maybe playing a festival yeah. outdoor show. You can really see the crowd energy. Yeah. So I may go back in and guest sometime this year um nothing nothing set in gold yet uh they're still working they're back in and they're back at it uh with a brand new cast and um most most of the original cast uh are not there anymore um but the show goes on because it's, it's about the show it's not about who's in it it's about the show well i usually hit vegas once or twice a year so i hope at some point maybe i can catch you doing that that would that would be amazing I look so I was going to ask you about summer tour plans, but it already looks like you got some of that covered. You're doing some festivals coming out. 
yep. and doing some yep. shows. Hopefully, we'll see that grow. Yeah, I want I want to keep the band sort of hot and uh, and and do more with it. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's the plan. That's the plan. Excellent, excellent. Sounds so good. Well, folks out there, if you have not added the new tracks from Alive and feel like hell to your playlist, I highly suggest you do at this time. You can pick up your copy of Robin's new solo album Alive out February 17th from Frontier Music. Robin, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Really appreciate it. Robert, thank you very much for having me, and I look forward to the next one. Definitely, definitely. And all you folks out there, if you have comments or questions, feel free to email us at talkingaboutrock at gmail.com. You can like us and follow us on all the social media and check out this interview on YouTube. And it'll also be available on all streaming platforms. Robin, again, thank you so much, man. Look forward to chatting again. Thanks, Robert. Have a great day. You too. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.